RFL Ninjas, Thomas Tapp here. Jonathan's on the camera on the other side. Today, we have an awesome tutorial for you. We got the B-Twist tutorial. This one's been requested for a while. And before you get started, you need to have this prerequisite down. You need to have your B-Kick down, because this is an advanced uh, acrobatic move. So if you don't have your butterfly kick down, make sure to watch this video, check that out, and then watch this video. Now, one thing I wanted to point out is you could be in the position right now where you're struggling with your B-Twist, or you just can't land it. Or you might be watching this thing and that's an extreme acrobatic move. There's no way I could ever get to that point. I just want to let you know that if you're in that position, a lot of this is going to be due to your foundation points. And what I mean by this is if you haven't developed the mobility and flexibility, if you haven't developed the strength, you haven't developed your jump, learning your B-twist or these advanced movements is going to be pretty much impossible. So that's why I like to really focus on the foundation points. Once you develop that, if you're in the position where you think it's impossible, you might realize, oh man, my body, now I can do this stuff. I can do some of these things I thought were impossible. If you're struggling with it, you're going to pick up these movements a lot faster. So I'm going to share with you some exercises at the end to help with this, but let's go ahead and get started and learn the technique. The first part of the technique is your setup, your prep. And this is going to be exactly the same as the butterfly kick. So again, that's why it's important to learn the butterfly kick. So feet are wider than shoulder width apart here. You want a good bend in the knees because we're going to be doing a lot of movement through here. We're also going to be, keep this in mind, this foot here, whichever way you're going to or going towards, whichever way you like to spin towards, you're pivoting this foot to open up so you can have this knee in a nice bend here, a nice angle to perform this jump, okay? So keep that in mind. And what we're going to do is perform a U-dip motion. This is how we're going to generate all of our power, all of our height before we go into the jump. So we're gonna start off, hands are gonna be off to the right side. We're basically going into a leaning stance. So more of the weights on the right side here. Arms are on the far right side. And what we're going to do is swoop through the middle, down and up to the other side to start the jump. So it's important we do this with good form. So throughout this whole time, try to keep your back straight. And that's why it's important to develop the foundation points, you know, your mobility, your flexibility, so you have this range of motion here. But you want to keep the back straight. When you dip down, the back needs to be straight, head neutral, so that way when we lift up and go for the jump, our body can go into that horizontal position to create a nice looking butterfly very easily. So keep that in mind. Back needs to be straight. So we're here, swooping through, up the other side. Another thing I want to point out is the release point. So some people will perform their prep up and their jump here and they'll release at this point here, basically going in line with their foot here. Now what I've done and what most people do is you turn to where you're facing towards your back. So I'll show you back view here. So if you start here, swinging through, you want to be looking towards this direction when you're at liftoff point, okay? So keep that in mind, it's going to make it a lot easier to go into that spin and to perform this move properly. And what we're going to be doing to initiate the jump is, and that's part two, the jump, is we're going to be lifting with our heel, our heel is going to be driving up, our chest is going to be driving up, and our arms are going to be driving up at the same time. This is why it's important to develop the coordination, okay? So we've gone into the jump, we're lifting with the back heel, this back leg. We're lifting with our chest and our arms and we're jumping off this foot. All in coordination, get the ultimate height. We're facing towards the back here and that's when we want to perform the spin. This is when we go into the twist. And a good way to describe this is, learning this from a buddy at the gym, is you want to imagine there's a little leprechaun here. Imagine it's like one of us, one me or Jonathan, but smaller. And what you're going to do is you're going to punch that leprechaun in the face. And what this is going to do is allow you to generate that torque and that spin with the arm here and go into that spin. Because what we're going to be doing here, I'll just show you standing up, you're going to be going up and we're going to be going to that spin here, okay? Here. So there's that punch. But you're going to be doing it here. Here. Okay? And we're going to go into that wrap position. Another thing you want to think about is, again, your body alignment. To create the, the best spin, you want to have your body as straight as possible here and aligned so the energy is very efficient. And another thing you can think about is you can have the legs, I like to have like one bent and ready for a kick. So if the right leg, the one that's up, that drives up, 
once you're in the spin, you can chamber it to finish off with a kick, and that's a little more advanced, but that's something to think about. Then once you've spun, you've gone into the spin, we're just gonna spin one time around and release out into the landing. So for the landing, you're gonna be landing on the same foot that you jumped off with here. So I jumped off to the left leg, I'm gonna be landing on the left leg. So I'll show you just real quick, all the pieces put together. You do the prep here and back in. So you notice, land with that leg, this one's still a little bent in case I want to go into any more tricks or if I want to go into a kick, things like this. Now with the landing, you want to make sure, like with all of our landings, land on the ball of the foot and absorb and have a good clean landing. So we went through the technique, now I'm going to go over some common problems that people have. One, some people don't know which way should I be spinning, which way should I, or which leg should I jump off of to do my B-twist. So one easy way to find this out is figure out which way you like to cartwheel. If you like to cartwheel to the left side, you probably like to do your B-twist going to the left side. Another good test is just standing naturally, jumping up and spinning, doing a 360 spin. Which side do you like to go to? If you like going to the left or towards the left shoulder like me, then your B-twist is going to be the same. You're going to be jumping off that left leg and spinning to the left. But you might be more comfortable the opposite than opposites apply. Starting with the left side, spinning towards the right. Another common problem is people have the trouble of going nice and horizontal with their B-twist. You might see people, they'll kind of go and they're at this angle where it doesn't even look like a B-twist. One of the most common ways this happens is, one, during your prep, during the U step here, if you don't have that straight back, it's going to be harder to go into a nice elevated horizontal position. The other thing is you can do is make sure to really drive your back leg up with your chest. Some people don't get enough drive with that back leg so it doesn't even out. So they'll look like this, they'll just drive with the chest and that back leg stays low. So really make sure to emphasize that back leg going up to fix the problem there. Now I'm gonna leave you with some foundation building exercises because honestly I think the, the real trick to learning these movements, getting any acrobatic movement, and if you're at the position where you know some of these might look really advanced, you might be surprised if you train these exercises I'm about to give to you that your body will just be able to pick these advanced movements up pretty quickly. So here's the first exercise. One, getting the flexibility and mobility with the hips and the lower back here. So we want to get in that wide stance position, keep the legs straight. And all we're gonna do is perform the prep, but just using the arms here, swooping down, keeping the legs straight. Keeping the back straight, and go down as far as you can, and back up this other side, and then down again, okay? This is gonna allow us to get a lot more flexibility through the calves, the hamstrings, and really get that needed flexibility here. The second exercise is developing the coordination specifically with our jump. Uh, this is what's going to hold a lot of us back on getting in that height and performing the B kick properly or B twist properly. So what we're going to do is simply get in that position that we would for the jump and all we're going to do is work on the timing with our back heel, our chest and our arms jumping off the ground. So we're just going to go here and jump up. Okay, we're just gonna practice that. And it doesn't look too pretty, but it's gonna help a lot with getting that strength in the jumping leg and that coordination with the arms and the legs here. So here, up, okay? That's all we're gonna do. Work on that motion here. Another exercise we can do is you find like the side of this fence here or a bench, and all we're gonna do is work on driving that back leg up to get air. So it's gonna look like this. Okay, just working in that drive with the leg here and jumping off this jumping foot. And work on both for balance. So again, same thing. Okay? Now, preferably you want about waist height. I was just demonstrating a little bit higher there. The other exercise is taken from our trainings in Kung Fu, because a lot of people, when they're performing this move, they think uh, that the, the power is generated from the arms. But a lot of it is done with the stance work and your core. So what we're going to do is work on transferring from these stances. So you're going to go into your leaning stance or your front stance here, transferring to your horse, into your opposite leaning stance or your opposite forward stance, sorry, there. So all we're going to do is work on going from here, transferring, okay? 
this motion here, you can work on both sides. So when doing this, think about the hips generating the motion here, the core here, and then also think about this all being connected, okay? This is basically a pole here. You're connected straight and everything is being generated from your stance work and your hips. So here, up, okay? And really focus on that, generating the motions through your stance work here and having this all connected. Once you really harness that, it's gonna make everything aligned and you're gonna get a lot of power and have a lot of efficiency with your jump here. So just a little quick little drill is you're going to transfer from those stances. Here, swoop through, there. Okay, and that's where you're gonna just back and forth. The last exercise is performing, just getting your spins comfortable and having good form with your spins. So all we're gonna do, and I actually took this from ballet, the technique here is, imagine again, you're a straight pole here. Good alignment here, the shoulders are down their sockets, your hips aren't sticking out, tucked in here, nice and straight. And we're just gonna work on this spin here. Jumping up, or you can even just go off one leg here, and spin. Also, look at what my head's doing. I'm spotting a spot right in front of me, holding the look, and then spinning, looking directly at it again. Okay, got that one from ballet, and improved my spins tremendously. So if we focus on these spins here, from this angle, from this axis, going both directions, it's gonna make it a lot easier when we're in that horizontal position to do the same thing. All right, so those are some awesome exercises you can use to develop those foundation points, that coordination, that strength, and that mobility and flexibility. So that's the B-Twist tutorial. Again, those foundation points are pretty much the biggest thing you can train on if you're having trouble with your B-Twist, and then use those technique steps to master your B-Twist. So make sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Leave any comments down below for any more tutorials that you wanna see. As always, train safe and get those B-Twists.